So let's start with this fact. For more than a thousand years, people have been drawn to Islam's message of peace. And the very word itself, Islam, comes from salam, peace. The standard greeting is, assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. And like so many faiths, Islam is rooted in a commitment to compassion and mercy and justice and charity. Whoever wants to enter paradise, the Prophet Muhammad taught, let him treat people the way he would love to be treated. And, For Christians like myself, I'm assuming that sounds familiar. <laughs> the world's 1.6 billion Muslims are as diverse as humanity itself. They are Arabs and Africans. They're from Latin America to Southeast Asia, Brazilians, Nigerians, Bangladeshis, Indonesians. They are white and brown and black. There's a large African American Muslim community. That diversity is represented here today. A 14-year-old boy in Texas uh, who's Muslim spoke for many when he wrote to me and said, we just want to live in peace. So here's another fact. Islam has always been part of America. Starting in colonial times, many of the slaves brought here from Africa were Muslim. And even in their bondage, some kept their faith alive. A few even won their freedom and became known to many Americans. And when enshrining the freedom of religion in our Constitution and our Bill of Rights, our founders meant what they said when they said it applied to all religions. Generations of Muslim Americans helped to build our nation. They were part of the flow of immigrants who became farmers and merchants. They built America's first mosque, surprisingly enough, in North Dakota. America's oldest surviving mosque is in Iowa. The first Islamic center in New York City was built in the 1890s. Muslim Americans worked on Henry Ford's assembly line, cranking out cars. Muslim American, a Muslim American designed the skyscrapers of Chicago. Perhaps the most pertinent fact. Muslim Americans enrich our lives today in every way. They're our neighbors, the teachers who inspire our children, the doctors who trust us with our health, future doctors like Saba. They're scientists who win Nobel Prizes, young entrepreneurs who are creating new technologies that we use all the time. They're the sports heroes we cheer for, like Muhammad Ali and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Akeem Olajuwon. And by the way, when Team USA marches into the next Olympics, one of the Americans waving the red, white, and blue will be a fencing champion wearing her hijab. Ibtihad Muhammad, who is here today, stand up. Come on, let me. There you go. So the, the, the best way for us to fight terrorism is to deny these organizations legitimacy and to show that here in the United States of America, we do not suppress Islam. We celebrate and lift up the success of Muslim Americans. That's how we show the lie that they're trying to propagate. We shouldn't play into terrorist propaganda. And we can't suggest that Islam itself is, is at the root of the problem. That betrays our values. It alienates Muslim Americans. It's hurtful to those kids who are trying to go to school and are members of the Boy Scouts and are thinking about joining our military. 